On today's show, we'll recap the Leafs' loss to the Sens and discuss some of the other big NHL storylines as hockey returns from the holiday hiatus. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. What's going on, Dave? How you doing this Thursday morning? Fresh off that 4-2 loss to the pesky Ottawa Senators. Ah, what a game. What a game, my friend. What a start. And <laughs> what a way to let it all just go. Bleh. Yeah, yeah. That's that's Honestly, we probably could end the podcast there because that's a pretty good analysis. Start out great. First 10, 15 minutes. Leafs got out to a 2-0 lead. Could have been 3-4-0 if it wasn't for a couple of good defensive plays by Ottawa. And uh, it's not how it ended, though. It ended with a 4-2 loss. Uh, the Sens ended up rallying, came all the way back, scored four unanswered, and uh, shut down Toronto. Um, what did you make of uh, of this game? What what went wrong? What happened after that first flurry of chances where Toronto was dominant for the first period and then kind of, you know, withered away in the second? Ottawa dialed up the tempo. They basically they started playing at a different pace and the Leafs couldn't keep up with it. Especially the Batherson stood to the line. That was like how slow the Leafs were, not only like keeping up with them skating wise, but to react to what was happening in their own zone. And once yeah. the Suns realized that they could use their speed to get to basically do what they needed to do to get back into that game. The Leafs just couldn't respond, and that that was that's concerning. That's concerning to see because it's not the first time a team has d- decided to up the pressure, dial up the tempo, and the Leafs aren't able to respond to it. I mean, realistically, it's that's the the for the past couple of years, that's kind of been the kryptonite for Toronto. Is like when a team utilizes their speed and then leans on them, takes away their space, their time and space. You know, Toronto doesn't know what to do because then they get flat footed. They don't, you know, skate. And going into the game, like if you listen to yesterday's podcast, you would have heard Dave and I say, you know, skating is going to be a big key for tonight's game because Ottawa, that's what they do. They skate, they take away space, they take away time, they close on you quick. And if you're Toronto, you got to keep the feet moving. And if you're, def- you know, playing defense, same thing. You got to make sure that you are keeping your feet moving, you're keeping up with those guys because they like to skate around and try and stretch the defense and they try, you know, score off the rush. And uh, it's what they do it's, as a Senators team. They're young, they're spunky, and they're quick. Um, and, and, you know, they could be physical as well, obviously led by Brady Kachuk. And all of that, you know, mixed together just seems to always give the Toronto Maple Leafs fits. And and it kind of happened again. I didn't think the Leafs were a terrible team tonight. Like, let's not say they, you know, were, were awful and, and, you know, they were well-deserving of a loss. I, I think this is a, you know, a night where, again, you could kind of look at it and say, yeah, you know, they, they got away with, you know, some poor play for a little bit. They've got a couple extra saves when Joseph Wall was going. You know, they got some lucky bounces that went their way for a little bit. Now they're starting to even out and go against them. You know, like you look at the game winning goal there. Um, like that's that's just a a bad goal. Like that's just kind of an unlucky goal if you're Toronto. Like nine times out of ten, Drake Batherson is not able to fit that in that what was that maybe maybe three inches of space tops above like above the shoulder of Martin Jones on that game winning goal, you know like nine times out of ten he's not going to score that. Uh, but you know this was this was that one time for them luckily, and you know the Sens were able to kind of lock it down from there and and close it out. Yeah, no, exactly, and um, 
yeah that that third like that third goal really irked me in a lot of ways like again so d- does 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 a night like tonight because we've spent a lot of time obviously over the last week and a half talking about the goaltending position and how, okay, well, if Samsonov can't get it done, got to give the, the the net to Martin Jones. Does a goal like that worry you where it's like, oh, maybe Martin Jones can't really get it done either? Or is that more of a one-off? For, for me, it's a one-off because he had some much tougher looks that he had to make saves on, like shorthanded breakaways and things like that, and he was able to keep them in it. Right, those ones they happen. Goal sometimes you know guys find ways to get those on net. It happens. Fortunately, if it becomes a trend, we see this a few times. Then yeah, I'd be concerned. But for me, it's a one-off. But it's one where you're you're the goalie coach. You got to figure out why why he was in that position and why didn't. And I know why he was in that position. He was more concerned about the cross ice pass, so he wasn't trying to lead, you know, commit to just leading to the post. But yeah, that's a, that's something you have to correct because, you know, it was a great play by Batherson to just throw it on net, but it's also like that's that's not how much net you should be leaving in that situation. No, and especially when you're like that big, like Martin Jones pretty tall goalie. He's like six foot four, six foot five. Should be able to take up the the whole net, especially on an angle like that. But um, you know, unfortunately left that little crack open and Batherson took full advantage um and turned out to be a backbreaker was was the game winning goal. But the Leafs just got so many unlucky bounces throughout that hockey game, I felt. And this is why, you know, I talk about there being, you know, the law of averages, you know, eventually evening out. I feel like the past couple of games here we've seen it. Like there was that game against New York where it was everything was going off of a player. Everything was going off a body or a skate. And it wasn't necessarily Martin Jones's fault on most of those goals. You know, tonight it wasn't necessarily the goals that were scored on them. That was unlucky. It was more so them not somehow scoring on wide open nets with the puck sitting right in the goal crease. And they just couldn't get a stick on it. Um, You had that one chance in the first period where Nylander kind of just poked it out from behind the net. And uh, even CC called it a goal on his, on his play-by-play because he thought for sure uh, Riley was going to, was going to score, but ends up ramping off of the stick of the defenseman and ends up going out of play. And, and that did not turn out to be a goal. And then a couple minutes later, Tyler Bertuzzi had a similar situation. And then again, the third period they had, I still don't know how that did not go in. It was basically the exact same play from earlier in the game, but this time it was Tavares who kind of poked it and it just goes right through the blue paint. You had players there. You had, uh Bertuzzi literally inside the blue paint and unable to get a stick on it. Uh and and ultimately it it gets swiped off of uh off of the or out of the blue paint once again. Um there's a few instances where, where that happened where Toronto hat was maybe you know six inches from a goal and unfortunately unable to do so. So a couple of bad bounces their way for sure. Bit of an unlucky night for Toronto. Yeah definitely an unlucky night and you play. You try to play that game again like that. Maybe at least, at least probably come away with the win in terms of like the opportunities and the chances they had in this game. And like Corpus Allo, as soon as the centers gave the lead, he was lights out. Like that's that's something that we hadn't really seen. I guess for the Sens case, yeah, I've locked on Sens probably talking about this. That's what they were hoping to see from Corpus Allo when they signed him. It hadn't really happened this year, so. He loves playing in Toronto. I think he was had a 4-1 record in Toronto coming into this game. So it was it just went with with goalies, it's voodoo in Toronto. Like they just find a way sometimes, even when they're not playing well. Yeah. And you know, like you said, if you play that game enough times, Toronto comes out on top. Like if that's a seven game series, Toronto probably wins that game. Uh, wins that series four out of seven times because they did actually, if you look at the underlying numbers, they did have the, uh, you know, the the better, the more chances, the more shots, uh, more high danger chances, scoring chances. They ended up with 52% of the expected goals uh, on the night. But, 
you know, the, the, the game's not played with, with expectations. It's played with actual goals and stats and facts. And the fact is, uh, you know, the, the Sens were able to actually put the puck in the back of the net, not uh, just, you know, upon expectation, unfortunately. Um, Matthew's goal scoring streak came to an end tonight. For a second, we thought it was the first goal of the game and it was an easy. All right, Matthew's got his goal out of the way. Let's keep it rolling. Um, and, and unfortunately, no, it ends up just looks like it's skinned off of uh, Matthew Nyes' skate and it ends up into the back of the net. But were you aware of how long it's been since Austin Matthews has scored on the Ottawa Senators, Dave? Yes, I am, actually. I think the last time we reviewed like, that game in Ottawa, it, like I didn't realize. Like We always hear talk about the four-goal game. Then it's just like, yeah, but he hasn't scored against this team in in quite a bit. He hasn't scored since May of 2021. That was back in the Canadian division days. The Canadian division. He hasn't scored the last two seasons against uh, against this Ottawa Senators team. They've had his number for whatever reason. I, I don't quite understand it. Um, when you think about, yeah, he, he came into the league with such a bang, scoring four, and then it's almost as if they were like, okay, never again. <laughs> you are never scoring another goal against his franchise ever, ever again. Uh, Cause man, like he just, for whatever reason is incapable of putting pucks past senators, goaltenders the last couple of years. And, you know, we thought that he had broken through and thought that he kept that streak going, but uh, it comes to an end, unfortunately. Um, so he's still sitting on 28 goals through 31 games. So my, my 50 and 50 bid took a little bit of a hit today against the Sens, but I still believe. I still believe, Dave. I still do. There's still, you know, lots of games to be played, lots of goals available, lots of goals coming out of that guy's hockey stick. Um, all right, why don't we take uh, another quick break? We'll come back. We'll do the good, the bad, the ugly, and then get to some news and notes around the NHL. You know, hockey return from the holiday hiatus. Lots of news to get into in what happened today in Canada. Victorious once again. They moved to 2 0 in the preliminary stages of the World Junior Championships. We'll uh, kind of break down that game a little bit as well in uh, in a few moments. But first, let me tell you guys all about one of today's show sponsors, and it's our good friends over at Sleeper. It's almost the halfway point in the season, Leaf fans, regardless. Where we are currently in the standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Uh, all you have to do is pick whether studs like Crosby, McDavid, Austin Matthews, William Nylander, or any other stars in the NHL, whether they'll record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight different player stats. You heard me, Leaf fans. You can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Lockdown NHL and you'll get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Lockdown NHL. See sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back into the Locked On Leaves podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast. We got new shows coming out each day, uh, weekday, Monday through Friday. If you have not subscribed to the show already and you're a daily listener. Why don't you go ahead and make yourself, uh, you know, go give it a little subscribe. A little subscribe. You can find it wherever you get your podcast. Also up on uh, up on YouTube. But I know that on YouTube, about 48% of our listeners who listen are not subscribed yet. So uh, if you do listen every day, first and foremost, we do appreciate you. We appreciate our everydayers. Uh, but we'd also appreciate a subscribe. We are on our road to 5,000. We're trying to get there as quick as possible. And uh, we're going to do a, a giveaway for that as well. So the quicker we get to 5K, the quicker one of you 5,000 people, uh, one of the 5,000 Leaf fans out there, can win themselves uh, a pretty cool prize. We, we, we're still trying to figure out what exactly we want to give away. But uh, we'll, we'll announce it as we get closer to 5K. But y'all got to start subbing up uh, so we can get there. Again, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, also up on YouTube. 
All right, um, let's get back into tonight's game, or last night's game by the time this is out, I suppose. Leafs lose 4-2 to to the Ottawa Senators in the third installment of the Battle of Ontario. It's now a 2-1 to one lead, I suppose, this year in the regular season series between the Sens and the Leafs um, this season. Uh, we'll go through the good, the bad, the ugly like we do um after every single Leafs loss, Dave. Uh, let's start with the good, because there was some good tonight. We, we It definitely wasn't a terrible game, as we've stated. So tell me a couple things that you liked from tonight that you think are worthy of being in the good category. Well, it didn't really... I don't know if it really got talked about much. Uh, I did post in the Discord how much I liked this one area of the game, which was William Lagason deciding, you know what? I don't like you poking my goaltender. And he didn't just say something to the guy because sometimes, you know, the players will say, no, don't do that. Or they give a little shove. Now he's like, we're dropping the gloves. You're, we're yeah. going. It. You're not touching my goaltender like that. And it's something I've been, you know, people constantly t- message me. Oh, how come the Leafs don't do like go after guys who poke the goalie or do soft. stuff? They're so yeah. soft. I get all the time from the old school uncles, man. The old school uncles, Uncle Chris is of the world, always sending out that text. Oh, this team's a bunch of soft babies. They 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 they're too scared to break a fingernail. Not Will Lagason. Will Lagason ain't afraid to do that. He stuck up for his teammate. I love the two, Dave. We text each other right when it happened. I was like, love to see that. Definitely love to see that. Yeah, no, I, I'm. Uh, that that's that's something that's going to earn someone like Lagason a little more props of the coaching staff too, because he'll the he'll get a little bit of props in the in the locker room saying, "Look what Lags did there, great on you." And I'm sure Martin Jones will give him a little stick tie saying, "Thanks for having my back as well." Well, I wonder too. Like you know, we talked about how Mark Giordano, like he's coming back relatively soon, and. I could mean, well, Lagason's job is in jeopardy. You know, this guy thinking to himself, I got to do something to stand out to make sure that, you know, I'm I'm irreplaceable in this lineup. Maybe that was him saying, hey, here's what I can offer that others maybe can't. Uh, I'm willing to do this to stay in the lineup. Um, so I think it's twofold. I think, one, he's being a good teammate, a great teammate, sticking up for, for Martin Jones. And two, he's thinking to himself, I got to do something to stick out and stand out and show Sheldon that, you know, I deserve and, and I need to be in his lineup on a nightly basis and he can trust me. Um, so I, I, I loved it, man. I, I thought it was great. That was one of my my goods as well uh, was Will Legacy. Little little star for, for getting into his first tussle as a Toronto Maple Leaf. Uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but but the start, you know, I thought that the first 15 minutes was was really good by the Toronto Maple Leafs, that they got off to a, a tremendous start, that they were zipping the puck around and they were kind of overwhelming um, you know, the senators, I thought the first shift from the, the top line, you know, they had a couple of waves of, of chances and it kind of led to, uh, you know, a, a, an extended ozone shift, which turned into a line change. And then the second line ended up with a couple of good looks and opportunities. And, um, you know, it was a really good chance for uh, Toronto to establish themselves pretty early on, ended up getting a couple of goals back to back. Yeah. Matt, you know, the, the nice tip, I suppose we'll call it followed up with Tyler Bertuzzi finally scoring. He'd been snake bitten. Uh, what do you go? Like 11 games or something like that without a goal. Like it's, he was very, very snake bitten. Um, even earlier in the game, he had a really good opportunity there in the mad scramble and, and just couldn't put it in the back of the net, but finally did score uh, the second goal of the game. Um, but then, you know, something happened and, and they were unable to find the back of the net the rest of the way. A lot of unlucky uh, bounces and, and you know, Corpus Allo played well too. You know, he did make uh, a couple of decent saves tonight as well. So, uh, but I did like this start. It, it was, it was a good start, which doesn't always happen for the Leafs. So we got to give them their flowers when they deserve it. I also say that the second line, like the Devars, Bertuzzi, Nealon in the line, I really like their play, especially in the Ozone, because they were getting to the dirty areas. Look at the missed chance by Bertuzzi. All three of Nylander, Tavares, and Bertuzzi were right in the crease area there. So that's yeah. why I was frustrated that they didn't get that opportunity to go because there were literally so many guys there to figure out how to get that, and the goalie was nowhere to be seen. I but know. They, they, every time they were in that zone, I felt like they had a really good chance to score. And look, we talked a lot about Matthews and Marner being reunited. 
it gets talked about how good that second line was when Nylander was on that line. So, you know, it's it's good to see that their the chemistry is still there. Obviously, yep. you like to see them puddle a few, you know, those opportunities that they get. But I really liked how they played tonight. Yeah, uh, it was bad for you, Dave. Uh, bad for me. I'll go with the Martin Jones goal because I have something that's a little more ugly. I'm gonna say the the goal that Martin Jones allowed. I thought was bad. Obviously, okay. Allow a goal like that. Okay. Okay. For I'll, that, that was my ugly. Like that, you. It's a tough goal to let in, and and oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna castrate the guy for it, but that's a tough one. And when it it ends up holding up as the game winning goal, that's just it's a backbreaker, and you, you you hate it. Like Leaf fans, like that's how we're gonna lose this game, really, off that goal. It's by being at a position like that, and ugh. It does kind of turn your stomach a little bit, especially since it's the Ottawa Senators. Um, so th- for me, it was the ugly. For for bad, like honestly, I, the, the power play for me was was not good tonight. I thought that it was it was it was gross. Is that your ugly? The power play it was my ugly. Yeah, I mean, the reason why it was ugly for me is not only that they didn't score, but how many shorthanded opportunities did Ottawa have? From that power play, and not just because Ottawa got the puck and blazed past them. Brutal passes looked very sluggish. Like Sheldon Keefe said after the game, you know, like, yeah, once in a while you're going to have things aren't going to be as sharp. But he said, what I didn't love is that I thought we were really outworked on our power play. That part is not acceptable. And to me, that's been my issue sometimes with this power play. And partly why I say having that top unit out for so much can be a bad thing because they get tired, they make sloppy plays, and it ends up leading to odd man chances for the uh, for the opposition, and that's kind of what happened here, right? Sloppy passes, guys well, that get on their heels, and it leads to those shorthanded chances. Well, led to a goal like the Parker Kelly. That was short, short shorthanded goal, yeah. was it not? The Parker it Kelly was. goal, the, and yeah. that's kind of what got Ottawa back into the game. Like that's yeah. their first goal of the game. It's like, all right, boys. There's one. We got one. We're halfway there, and it's it's a backbreaker because if you're Toronto and, and, and if you're able to score there in the second period and you know make it three nothing, you kind of take advantage of that game. Mm. But instead, the next goal goes to Ottawa, shorthanded, and now you've given that team some confidence. And and you know they obviously didn't look back. It did spark them. They ended up tying it. Uh, you know in, in the same period, and then. We obviously the Martin Jones goal is, you know, what what ended up resulting in the third and ultimately cost him the game. But um, yeah, that's I don't know what it is. Like, honestly, it comes down to a couple things like just they got to they got to get moving. Like when when their power play becomes stale and they stop moving their skills their feet and they just stop skating and it's very perimeter and they're just passing the puck around. It's like, what are we even doing? Like there's no good opportunities coming from this. You're just wasting time, and ultimately you're 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 giving up the puck, and it's going the other way eventually, right? So yeah, the power play was was yeah, it was pretty ugly. It, you could definitely chalk it up at, as that. I mean, they got out score tonight, so that's that's never a good thing when uh, when your power play allows more goals than they score. And and the thing that's weird about it too is we talked about this pregame as well. The centers had the 31st ranked penalty kill. There's only 32 teams in the league, Dave. Like that's the second worst PK unit in the NHL. And Toronto struggled mightily to do anything against them. Um, Again, could that potentially be the effect of, of the new coach? Could that be, you know, the thing, because we know that Jacques Martin is more of a defensive coach and he wants to try and tighten things up. And, you know, perhaps that's, what we saw tonight from them, especially in the third period. Um, and then, in, in, you know, on, on the PK as well. Uh, so perhaps that's the coach really coming through and, 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 you know, the, the senators trying to, to prove their worth to this guy. Um, but either way, like Toronto, you're supposed to be the better squad. And when you've got your superstars out there, like PP one is full of stars. It's some of the yeah. best players in the league. Like all five of those guys are like top 80 players in the NHL. Right, like you got to do better. Got to at least generate some some scoring chances, not chances against, which is what happened multiple times tonight. So, yeah, I'm with you, man. I I can get behind that definitely being part of the ugly. That's for sure. And I'll say this: look at the game against Buffalo. 
right right after Samsov gets pulled, shorthanded breakaway in the yeah. back of the net. Yeah, it's not it's the first. It's a this is this is becoming a trend that you well, don't want. They went a long stretch here where that penalty kill was. Uh, oh, sorry, we're talking penalty. We're talking power play right now. So never mind. I was gonna say weird because the penalty kill was killing it, but it's the opposition's penalty kill that's doing well. Yes. Um, but yeah, like it's it, it, you're right, man. It's this is now a few games in a row here where you're giving up a lot of chances um, when you're on the man advantage, and it's not supposed to work that way. It's supposed to work quite the opposite, in fact. All right, let's take uh, another quick break. We'll come back. Let's get to some news and notes from around the NHL and uh, kind of recap Canada's 10 nothing beatdown on Lapia at the World Junior Championships. Our guy, Fraser Minton, hit the scoreboard, pal, the captain of Team Canada. So we will uh, we'll recap that and get to some more news and notes from around the league. But first, a word from our show sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NHL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com. Uh, slash locked on and kick off the NHL season. FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast. We've got uh, five episodes coming out each week, every weekday, Monday through Friday. You can find them wherever you get your audio pods at, also up on YouTube. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, Dave, uh, the NHL returned with a bang on Wednesday evening. Didn't go so well for Toronto, obviously, after losing in the Battle of Ontario. But it did go well for a lot of other squads out there in uh, in the league. Where, where do we want to start? What's kind of what's one of the uh, the things that you kind of noted uh, from the NHL's return last night? I think we should talk about the Arizona Coyotes. Oh. Go ahead. Go off, King. Man, they're down 4 nothing, 4 nothing to the Colorado Avalanche, which you're like, okay, yeah, I can see that. They won the game yeah. in overtime. <laughs> like, unbelievable. They pulled the Toronto, but, but, but they actually won. Yeah they, yeah, they pulled the Toronto, but they actually won. Yeah. Um, Sean Dersey had himself a game. Played over former, former Toronto Maple Leaf Sean Jersey. Yep, went from Toronto to LA, then was dumped over to Arizona. Not dumped over, really. Wow, was, that was an insane dump. Like it, it, <laughs> taken out of context, that's a weird thing yeah. to say. Um, but like he was kind of just a, a cap dump, just a roster move to try and open up space to make some other signings and dealings. He got Gavrikov signed and some other uh stuff that they wanted to do. I think probably also the Pierre Luc Dubois deal was factored into it, but they trade him for basically nothing. I think maybe they got a second round pick for him, and he's been unbelievable this year for the Arizona Coyotes. Um, what do you he had a four point night, played over 23 four. minutes. Against the, Arizona, against the Colorado Avalanche, and I mean, obviously played a big factor in that win. Like, if you're an Avs fan, like that's concerning for a couple of reasons because this team hasn't been playing well lately. Winnipeg is right behind. Like, Winnipeg's a point behind with games in hand. That's and they played really well this year. The concern is is well goaltending. They're they're yeah. they're not getting the goaltending that they got a year ago. Um, from uh, Georgiev. So that that's been a bit of an issue. And keep in mind, like last week, we did hear. I, I don't know, maybe for those who missed it, I suppose Devon Tays, who's an extremely talented defenseman, top pair defenseman for them, came out and basically said, like, we got a bunch of guys out here that think they're playing well. They're not. They're fooling themselves. They're kidding themselves. And uh, you know, cryptically ripped into some of his teammates for their poor play and 
poor decision making essentially uh, and said that they weren't really playing the system uh, as intended essentially didn't quite say who it was you know you can infer as to who you think it may be but then to come out of the NHL holiday break and give up a four goal lead to the Coyotes I bet you Devontae's is not a happy camper today no, and I'm sure a lot of reporters would like to hear what he had to say after that one. So good on Arizona. They're staying in the thick of the of the playoff race there, uh, even in the the central. Yeah, Sean Very- Dersey, by the way, unless I don't think Elite Prospects has already updated this. I, I could be oh, wrong, wow. but I don't believe so. Uh, usually they kind of do it overnight. So um, 24 points in 29 games for Sean Dersey. With the Yotes. Not bad. Pretty good. Uh, what else happened? Connor Bedard. Bedsy. With a beautiful rip to win the game in overtime. And uh, I guess we can't really show it for copyright. reasons. Copyright reasons, unfortunately. But go check it out on Twitter. Uh, just just look up Connor Bedard. It's probably going to be all over your Twitter feed. But man, was this ever just a beautiful? Uh, you called it a, a Matthews esque shot. Yeah, like toe drag ripped it. Like didn't even goalie had no chance. Like how? Like first off, Connor Hellebuck is who he scored it on. You're decent not beating. Goalie. You're yeah, not beating Connor goalie. Hellebuck from deep. Like from where he shot it from just snapped it off the stick. And like, this is after the guy pulled off the Michigan a few days ago. Like yeah. he's, <laughs> I think he's, I think he's pretty good at this hockey thing. I think Connor yeah. Dowd's not too bad at it. Well, so the Blackhawks, they, so they won the game two to one, like Bedard had both goals. Let's, yeah. let's just, you know. Oh yeah. He knows the score before. <laughs> is that the 15 goals already, man? Like, as a rookie, when, goals, no one around him. Yeah, but, it's it's impressive stuff, man. Absolutely, I mean, he's living up to, he's living up to that 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 you know phenom superstar generational status. Uh, I, for an eighteen year old, he was what the third youngest player to ever score uh, an overtime goal in regulation or in in the regular season. Was that the stat? Third, yeah, he's the third youngest player. The all the other people. Some guy named Sidney Crosby and Jordan Stahl. Decent players. Stanley Cup champions. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Bedsy, man. Pittsburgh yeah, Penguins. Speaking of the Pittsburgh Penguins, yes. Chris Letang. Go from youth to the old vets. Chris Letang setting a new record last night. Five assists in a period. In a period, guys. That is outrageous. Against the Islanders, they won the game seven nothing. Um, he has six. Dude, five, he has six assists. He yeah. finished. Yeah, he finished the night with six assists, but the record was five assists in a period. I think it was six assists. So that tie tie a record like for in a game assists in a game. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good question. Like I might, it might have, dude. Like, I, I there's might, not many dudes who are racking up six assists in a hockey game. I have to look this up. Uh, but yeah, no, like Malkin had a couple of goals. I think Gensel, ha- Gensel. he is sorry. Uh, let's see, he is the first defensively hits five points in a period. Uh, Dale Howachuk was the only other person to do five assists in one period. Okay, that ties the record for most apples by a D man in a game in NHL history, done six times, most recently by Gary Sutter, Suter, sorry, in 1986. <laughs> Dude's matching records that haven't been done since 1986. Unbelievable. Oh, it was the most points by a Pens player in a single period in history. That's impressive when you think about Crosby, Crosby. Renew, Yager. Yeah. Wow. That's insane, actually. <laughs> that's that's wild, dude. Yeah, Latang. Hell of a player, man. And even to this day, he's still uh he's still chugging along. Very, very good player. Hall of Fame worthy for sure. Um, here's uh one more interesting little thing that I that I noted from uh Wednesday's slate of games. So the Sabres uh, lose again to the Bruins. Four to one was the final. They went zero for six on the power play. 
and then gave up three goals on the power play. So they got uh, crushed in the special teams. And I reached out to uh, to our good pal, Jody Biasi from Locked On Sabres. And I'm like, hey, man, like, you think Donnie Granado's on the on the hot seat here? Like, it's it's not looking good for uh, for the Sabres, man. It's 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 not. And, and he said, nah, maybe not like I probably not quite yet. Um, you know, he thinks that he's got a bit of a longer leash. They're trying to implement some new systems that just hasn't quite grasped yet. Uh, but man, it's the Sabres were supposed to take a step this year and it just has not happened. It really, really hasn't. The Sabres and the Senators, like the two of those teams really both were expected to, to make that leap and be competitive and, you know, potentially make the playoffs and it's not looking likely for uh, for either squad as we hit you know the, the the christmas mark of the year of the calendar no and like after you had that big win against the leafs you know the stanley cup type of win that a lot of teams seem to have against the leafs hasn't really launched them forward as they may have expected uh, yeah no no it didn't it did not um well, see, it's, it's still a long year. Still a lot of hockey to be played right. for uh, for the Sabres. Uh, World Junior Championships. Canada dusted Latvia 10 Zipperuni. They moved to 2-0 in the preliminary uh, stages of the tournament. Macklin Celebrini. So he's the projected number one pick this year. Uh, he had five points in this game. He's he's 17 years old. Like the guy's got to wear a, a bucket, um, a face mask in this tournament, and he's putting up legitimately like Bedard esque numbers in this tournament with a five point output. Yeah, uh, it's pretty incredible. And and it's not just the the like you can look at the stats and say, oh, what a good game. But then you watch him play, dude. And he's, he's driving, doing, driving it, driving play, going down the center, just making he's he's pulling defenders towards him because you know they're worried about you know, looking silly against him and then he's like okay i'll just go and set up my other buddies here on the line here that can score right the 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 breakaway goal just a nice touch on the backhander there and the little details in the game right like he's good he's doing things on the four check he's you know in those areas like he's you know backing up teammates in the defensive zone like Things like that are gonna is what makes him you know stand out from all these other prospects, right? Yeah, you got guys who can put up good offensive things, but are you doing the other things that show scouts there's more to my game than just being a good offensive player? And that's what's gonna make Celebrini, I think, not only a great prospect for and obviously him being a number one pick, you know, projected. But for Canada, a lot of people are like, I don't know if Canada's got the horses this year. Celebrating is like, ah, hold my beer. Yeah, yeah, get on my back. Let's get it done, boys. Let's get it done. They do look really strong through uh, through the first couple games. Now they got they got a toughie against Sweden. Um, you know they 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 beat Finland in the first game. Then you know Latvia's they're Latvia. Like let's you know this yeah, not yeah. The greatest greatest team. Um, uh, but they've got, they're going to have a test Friday. They've got, uh, they got the Swedes, so that'll be a tough game, but just to, just to put into perspective, um, Macklin Celebrini had five points in today's game alone. Adam Fantilli at last year's world junior championships through seven games only had five points through his whole tournament, Dave, mm -hmm. this, and this kid's currently has 21 points in 36 games in the NHL as an 18 year old. So, and I think, I think Fantilli had someone named Connor Bedard on his team to kind of help him along know, a little bit. Yeah. Maybe not have to go up against the top, you know, matchups every game. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, I, I'd have to go back and, and, you know, really watch those games to know if that's, you know, how it went down, but good chance it did. Uh, yeah, Celebrini, he's he's being matched up against, you know, some of the toughest talent out there for the opposition. He's just making them look silly. Uh, least prospect, Fraser Minton, scored his first goal of the tournament today as well. 
uh, in the win over uh, Latvia. I think he had two points on the night. And, um, you know, it's nice to see, uh, you know, at least Prospect just repping the, the, the red and white and, you know, scoring goals for Canada as opposed to, like, you know, knives with the Americans or don't be Nemola or Roni Irvin in for the Finns or, you know, we've had a couple Swedish players out uh, playing in this tournament. It's nice to finally be able to celebrate the Canucks out there and a couple of the Leafs prospects playing for uh, for Canada. One other storyline I want to bring up, Germany beating Finland. Yeah. They were 0 for 25 against Finland in this tournament and got their first win against them at the World Juniors. What a story. The bench celebration, they left the bench as if they had won the Stanley Cup. Uh, yeah, it's, as if it's they awesome, had won man. the like tournament. I, you know. Crazy. Yeah, legitimately. Um, it's great to see. It, it is. And Canada's got, uh, was that going to be New Year's Eve? Canada's got Germany? Yes, they do. And I believe. Like, Finland's 0-2. Germany with the win is now in third place. Pretty much can be Canada, Sweden for the group A. Like, let's I I yeah. really could yeah, like Canada's already two and oh, Sweden's two and oh. I'm sorry, Sweden's one no, they played t- today. Yeah. So I I'm very curious. I think I think if Germany obviously, even if Germany loses, the if they can pick up one more win. Against like I think Latvia is the only other team they have left to play. Yeah, it's looking pretty good for them uh, to fit, come out of the group, which would be very shocking if Finland doesn't make it through. Yeah, extremely. They're always a, a, a tough team, so we'll uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll we'll recap, you know, tomorrow. We'll see what happens in tomorrow's leg of games uh and we'll also come back tomorrow and start to tee up what we got going on with the maple leafs as well they got another a weekend back to back they got uh what do they got they got columbus and then who they got on saturday i don't know i'm blanking here now columbus on set on friday Lays hurricane. Then, yeah the hurricanes on saturday so been a tough tough second leg of that back to back um, where is it going to be Samsonov? Is it going to be someone else? And, and nudge, nudge, a potential Swedish stud down in the minors? I don't know. We'll have that conversation tomorrow, David. We'll have it tomorrow. Uh, but that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morris Sudi and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Go ahead, leave a like and a comment down below if you enjoyed today's episode uh, and a review as well if you're listening on, uh, on iTunes. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.